Hello, everyone. Welcome to the J3U podcast. I'm your host, John Jewett. With me is co-host Luke Miller. And today we are talking about mini cuts. What's up, Luke? Not much, man. I think this is a uh, broadly misunderstood topic across a lot of clientele. And I think some clarity on 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 this topic is going to be good to kind of walk through and like what to be expected within timelines and everything like that when we when we do talk about doing these diet phases that are termed oftentimes like mini cuts um, and just kind of maybe start with presenting the presenting the case in which it kind of presents that that's needed because there's a couple I think in my opinion that it kind of warrants the deployment of this yeah I guess the the first thing of just the operational definition of this of, of the mini cut right what what really even is this and it's uh, just a, a for a mini cut, it would be a brief fat loss phase during an extended off season period. And it's not full on contest prep, right? <laughs> it's not, it's, it's not meant to be this long duration fat loss phase and digging into body fat levels that would be suboptimal within an off season setting for performance and building tissue. Yep. Yep. And I think that that's an important thing to understand because we can also kind of like set target points for what composition is needed for the next phase. Because oftentimes this kind of falls, like you had mentioned, in these longer all seasons for people where we're really just trying to set up the runway for the next push up to be able to push up aggressively across the rest of the next push. And there's some people that, you know, this doesn't happen very often. And there's some people who are a little bit more proclive to put on body fat and relative amount of tissue is going to be kind of a little bit of a determining factor here. But uh, for those that are a little bit more biased towards body fat accrual, it, it's very beneficial to kind of build runway for them. Yeah. And that, that gets into the, the why to do it. Right. Cause if we are running these extended off season times and muscle gain is getting accrued, it's going to come with some body fat gain. And like you said, it's, it's very individual for what that rate of fat gain might be. And if we're continuing to push up and continue to gain body fat, at some point you're going to have to pull back on body fat just to be within the realms of, of a doable contest prep, right? Cause if you're, yeah. you know, for a male over 20% body fat, you're looking at a 30 plus week contest prep. And that's, that duration within a deficit is just not going to be ideal because you're going to run out of tools at the very, very end. So there's like this workable range of body fat you need to be in the off season. And so once you reach those upper markers for it, this is what this phase is for to, to bring you back down to gain that runway again. Yeah. There's probably some other whys though too, right? Um, Yeah. There's definitely a couple other whys within it. I mean, problems with getting too high in body fat is health markers. Yeah, I was going to say that as like a, a major thing, right? Like aromatization into estrogen or estradiol, um, blood pressure issues that come off the cuff of that, um, even like managing blood glucose values and insulin sensitivity as an issue. Um, and we know that that's going to be largely dependent upon ability to utilize food but that's kind of self-dependent upon body composition for the athlete as well. Yeah. Yeah. The food thing's an interesting one. Cause it's, I see some guys that just, uh, you know, food gets so high and GI is just fighting back and they're more, more bloated having starting to have reflux. Now, a lot of those are probably underpinned with just more of a systemic inflammation present, Yeah, but also just pulling back in food just does give the GI a bit of, you know, quote unquote rest <laughs> or just yeah. a break from the the chronic pushing. Um, and it can just help with improving, improving appetite. And I think along with that, it gives a psychological break from the just extended push phase, mm-hmm. which uh, might not be talked about a lot. I mean, I know some type A headstrong, I can just do this forever. Like <laughs> maybe you're fine. And if you're not gaining body fat, you know, more power to you. But for a lot of people, they can just get monotonous and burn out of just, yeah. you know, the times like, man, I can't wait to start a prep. <laughs> and, like, 
until like then you, then it's starting to lack adherence because food's so high they like are starting to miss meals and I, I see that happen it's like hey you know what it, let's uh let's pull back and it might be time to reset everything yeah and I think from on the adherence point too it's like that shifting goal set is resonates really well with people because there's a lot of people who because we talked about gain chaining in the last podcast right and in the gain chaining phase, it's like this maintenance period that we talk about holding tissue. And a lot of people like lose direction with that, even though it, it is necessary. And a lot of times what I'll see is that shift in direction psychologically, just managing a client helps with the adherence on everything because to them, it's like, oh, like I'm dieting. I can't have these extra things off plan. I need to get my cardiovascular activity in. I need to make sure I have my step counters on all of these kinds of things. Right. And it's like, you see that ball start to roll. You see the routine start to fall back into place. Um, and it really just kind of sets up like even just habit formation for the next push up is like a, is a big one too. Yeah. So go, I guess within that, then it's kind of like, when, what is the timeline to be implementing something like that? Yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest things that people, and we can talk about both duration and when to implement, I think is important. Um, a lot of people, what they think mini cut, they think like four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. And for most people, that's probably going to be pretty short time duration for them to be able to clip off the amount of body fat, get their GI back to a point that's really functional, get the hunger signaling back, manage the health metrics, all of these things and things. And then on top of that, in the back of your mind, what you should be thinking is, we had talked about the most of the time that this is within the confines of a longer off season. Are you giving yourself enough runway to progress a push up over a 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 week period? Because, you know, that runway is endless when you're coming out of contest prep, right? It's like the longest runway you get of your entire throughout any of the portion of like the periodized year that we do. And being able to have that runway into the push up is important. So then the follow up questions like, OK, what does this timeline look like? And I think that for most people, it's within that like eight to 12 weeks of dieting. And I think that that's probably where we kind of start with duration. And so like it kind of guides like, OK, when do I when do I do this? You know? Yeah, I think I, ideally because you, you're right, like hopefully for most people, they have a lot of runway post show. As long as you don't, you know, <laughs> fudge it up and went too hard and you <laughs> lose a lot of that, which some people do. Um, and I'll address that because this this has application within that situation. Um, but, uh, you know, ideally, I think if you should be able to pull out a good 30-ish weeks, I think, of extended off season before it's a time to, like, wash off some, pull some body fat off. Um, yeah. And, like, just to have some, like, number association it's going to depend on your starting point of, of what is an optimal off-season body fat point for you so where, where do you have all those prep you know the, all those adaptive uh, occurrences that occur on prep like with sleep duration like alterations libido function all those things are gone what body fat is that that's like your good off-season baseline starting point for a lot of guys that might be eight percent might be 10 percent body fat it might be a little higher and so from there moving that up past you know you, a lot of times i see if you're going above 15 percent body fat that's probably getting the outer limits of where you're going to be able in a striking distance for a contest prep now it's okay to go past it but this is where we have in like okay this is going to set the timeline for the fat loss phase if you're moving up to that 20 percent body fat mark and you know you need to get down to 15 for this contest prep that gives you some structure of like all right how much weight do you need to pull off then roughly and how long should that roughly probably take you yeah and i think that you made a good point and it's not just like getting that person if, if it's within the confines of planning another push if you're bringing them back down you don't want to get them to that 15 percent and then turn around and push up again because then you're just back in the same place that you were and it may also like kind of guide the decision making in the push which is why i'm so adamant about like setting these timelines for people is because it's or like when are this approximate date that we possibly want to step on stage because that last push up may have to kind of hold the 
regulator at this 14, 15% so that we can make it when it comes time to prep, right? So that, that mini cut or that diet phase should bring them down to 11, 12, probably, so that you have that runway to kind of bump them back up. Yeah, to repeat that whole entire process again. Now, of course, that would change if you were, were planning on going into a prep from there. Yeah. Would you, would you still bring them down to that 11, 12% mark? A lot of times I would just get them to the striking point and then try to maintenance it from there. Because hopefully, like, if we get them to where we feel like we're in striking distance, like, pulling them up to maintenance should have calories at a point where we still have runway for contest prep, activity still got plenty of runway, um, and we've also kind of washed, hopefully we didn't get a lot of diet-based adaptations across the, a mini cut, but and we shouldn't, but if there were any from, like, a food signaling, like, wanting more food than what's on your plan type of a thing, that kind of starts to go away before we, we started the contest prep. Yeah. I think if you did pull someone down into that 11, 12% mark, a 16 week prep is, is a doable thing. Yeah. I, I think that's with structuring in like times of deload diet break, maybe twice within that, that period, then also being accounting for that like week prior to the show. And so the of true dieting time would be a little bit less but that's for someone that's truly at that mark. I think a lot of people just are inaccurately at that mark, right? <laughs> that's what, it, that's the issue. Like you have some ab outline. You're like, yeah, I'm probably 12, 10% or something. It's like, no, you're probably 15 or 16%. And then that, then they lose all those weeks that they would have added in otherwise, if they have, they have they known better. Um, so for accuracy, yes, that timeline would, would work, but for a lot of people, it's in just an inaccurate um, assessment, but no, I, yeah, I think that that sets like, the timeline durations of when this might, you know, be implemented. Um, what I would add on here of like when to do these things would uh, I, I wouldn't use one within three months of post-show for fat gain triage, <laughs> right? Agreed. So, <laughs> Agreed. Um, you know, if you have your post-show period and you've reached a point where body fats just become, excessive just from eating way too much. The, the thing that you don't want to do is go back into a deficit because you're still in a point where you're trying to restore a, a lot of the adaptations that occurred, a lot of hormone disruptions and, and health markers. And then you're also then at that same point, you've had a lot of body fat, you're not fully recovered, but then you're going to go back into a deficit and it's not going to recover any of those variables. And you're just going to be in a really poor situation to even pull body fat off. Um, so best case scenario is like, you, you do need to just hold there. Um, if body fat's high, you have enough body fat on you, make sure food's at a good spot and you're managing all, all recovery, um, fatigue. And then from there, after those three months phases, when everything stabilizes, then you could do this phase, then start your off season up from there. But within those first months of post-show, that's time when I would say not to do this as much yeah. as you want to. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that that's kind of like where the whoopsies conversation comes in play. Like the person that gets post show, their first two weeks, they just first two to four weeks, they just fall off the rails, and they're like, "I want to diet again." And it's like, well, like you know, you're probably still thinking about food as you're talking to me. So yeah, it, it's like let's get you a little bit further away, and then we can talk about tidying it up if we need to. And that process might just be cyclic. It's like, oh man, I'm post show, I gained a lot of body fat, I want to diet. Okay you diet, then the same thing happens. And it, it's so much harder that time around because you're even more food focused and you don't have like a show date. You're just doing it for like the vanity and your sanity, <laughs> um, which you're, you're insane anyway, right? <laughs> so <you're> so <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's just a, a really snowball effect that can be there. So you, you, yeah, best thing, push the brakes on the fat loss phase and, uh, and hold off to your stable. Yeah. And maybe on the insanity, mental stability part, like maybe understand that post show you're a little bit more emotionally driven than yeah. you are typically are. So have that understanding before you go and hop into another diet phase right off the cuff. Um, I guess other time points, maybe a mid push phase. I, I, I don't know if that would be the ideal time to run one either. Um, um, with, no. 
all markers like within good measure, right? What I've done, and I've done this very successfully with a couple of people, is the last push may be partially pushing body weight up, partially the mini cut back down to the start point of prep, where the diet phase is still within a super physiological compound usage. So that it's almost like once the push is over, we have that gain chaining maintenance phase into prep. We've kind of washed off anything that we had to do to get the back to the start point of prep and then go from there. Um, it is a little bit, it's not my favorite way to do things, but it's more so happened with people that upon intake, they have like a show date, they, they are uh, obsessed over doing, we need a little bit more tissue, but we don't have the time duration to really push up, come back down, push up so that you can do that within the confines of one push. I will say it's probably a sub optimal way of doing it, but I have done it a couple of times successfully. Just to be clear. So you're saying you're, you're, you're pushing them up body weights, increasing then mid push. You'll that's when you drop them back down at the same time, escalating dosages. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I could see it also like another situation too, of like, if you've, come off an off, um, off season push up. This might be a little bit more ideal if you have the timeline, because that's what, that's the conversation, right? Um, so if you, you come off this push up phase, you've done a holding phase, you pull back on gear. And, and then at the start of your next escalation, you pull body fat off at the beginning. Uh, when, when it's at, when you need the least amount of compound to hold tissue. And then as you're progressing up and you get to that, body fat you want then you could just reverse and and push food up and i think the it's it's an it's an easy move from a fat loss to a building phase um you don't need like this holding phase or you know there you, you might you might have a deload somewhere in there wash some fatigue off and then push reverse right in right into it i think that would be perfectly fine uh, versus the other way of like you're you're pushing up and then to pull back down um it could work it could work fine it's just like you are accumulating stress throughout the push-up phase and then going into a dieting phase you're just kind of dropping a little bit extra in there um, yeah like you said it's not your favorite or ideal way to do it it's just like timeline dependent and what is need based it can be done yeah i think and i even do this in people's timelines documents without like overly kind of telling them is like, so I color code each phase for people and like the, the maintaining pay phase will often be blue. And then like the last two or three weeks, there'll be like start of like a tidy up. And that's like, they don't see the overlay, but for me, what I'm seeing is the overlay of like three weeks of that get maintenance phase on baseline PEDs is dieting. And then three to four weeks or, or more like four to five weeks into the escalation, we're still dieting before we get into further into the escalation. And I think that that's kind of where, like you said, my favorite preferred way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I've done it to where I've been cruising on a baseline and then I've just run uh, like a six week fat loss phase while just keeping that baseline. Cause really honestly, the, the amount that you need to maintain tissue is so, pretty much your baseline dosage. It really can. And, um, and your ability to retain that tissue at that body fat level, it should be fine. So when, when I put the cutoff on in an off season is you start seeing performance drop off. That's usually where I shut down like a mini cut fat loss phase, but, but I've done it well to where I, I've dieted down, got pretty lean while on a, a very low baseline amount and then move into a push up phase from there. And man, it, everything takes off. It's like, it's like you feel like you're in a post-show phase, right? Food, like food's so reactive. You get great training. It's the same thing, um, just at a, at a little different level. But uh, nonetheless, that's that's kind of the preferred optimal way to run it. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I think that's probably going to be uh, how we might have to do it for me once we get through this like IVF stuff. Is like yeah, kind of pull it off a little bit on the beginning of that S escalation and then go full bore into it um yeah i think so just knowing because you're you're fairly adaptive yeah very in, so. in a prep so you you lose like tools quickly um which on the very tail end of a prep can make it hard to pull off the extra so i think even if you're starting in that leaner spot it just gives you the timeline to account mm -hmm. for that slow rate of fat loss at the very very end 
Yeah, I think, and this is a question I wanted to bring up is what's on the table to use within a diet phase or mini cut? Because some people are fans of using things like fat loss agents and some people aren't. Um, and just kind of wanted to walk through like what's on the table for, for both you and I, and then go from there. Yeah, well, obviously it's um, like we had just talked, it's what phase are you in, right? Um, so if you are moving through, if you've gone from a push phase, you're into this holding phase, you've probably been on, a, a, maybe for you, it might be a TRT dosage. It might be a baseline amount. Just, it should be that minimal amount needed to hold tissue, whatever that is for you. Um, and then from there, I think off the, the front end is I would usually try to hold that um, and then have some, maybe some minor escalations, which maybe that would be, you know, that 10 to 20% increase off baseline. But again, I don't think you need even need that much in place. So the, the anabolic load is what I'm saying is that it should be relatively low with maybe just a minor amount increased. Um, I think growth hormone as well is a, is a good tool during this phase and shifting that usage to using a little bit fasted in the morning and having cardio in having some cardio in place. Uh, there should already be a baseline there, but I think you could definitely have some extra as long as it's not, again, the primary thing is we are still in the off season. It's not impeding performance. So yeah growth hormone used as a fat loss mobilization tool um, would, would be helpful. And that could still be, you know, two I use prior to a, to a fasted cardio. And I think still having some additional in place if, if that's based on your need. Do you see, do you ever see need for things like clenbuterol, yohimbine within these phases at all? Uh, I wouldn't use yohimbine for one. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe in a prep, but it, I does, it does seem to drive a lot more anxiety and sympathetic drive. And so yeah. the, the stress aspect is pretty high with it. So I try not to use that. Um, and I just feel like in this scenario, you have so much tool from just whether you want to pull it from calorie intake or even expenditure that you really shouldn't have to dip into the other, other aspects for fat loss um, for clenbuterol. You know, I if you, you I could see deployment of a short, a small amount, like 20 micrograms as a starting point. And even like maybe it has some muscle retention aspect to it, uh, even for maybe a female as well, someone that you're not gonna always you don't have all the androgens to be be deploying all the time, that this might be a tool to utilize to help with with making up for some of that energy output. Um, but also might have some benefit in, in tissue holding as well. Yeah, which is kind of where I'll typically use it is within like the back ends of females tidy up phases. Um, and then for the longer duration tidy up, so the ones that have to last closer to 12 weeks, I'll use it on the back end of that just to kind of cap it off. I know people put like hard stops on it. Like, no, never use clean. Cause you're going to not have that tool that you're going to, you know, need to be saving it for prep. And, um, I, you know, I, I don't think the, the usage is at the magnitude where it's going to be issue. systemically taxing someone. Right. Yeah, um, I, I think it, it can offset some of the issues you might arise from having to take energy output so high or food intake too low, especially individuals that just don't have a lot of intake to begin with or are already on a high amount of output. Right. Um, yep. 100%. Agreed. Then, I mean, there might be application with using like um, injectable L-carnitine around training, um, mm. not, not fast cardio, but around training because it does need, need insulin present. And then, of course, we'd still have like, if, if you haven't listened to our like prophylactic series, um, metformin uh, and ARB, those things are already in place. Yeah, and then so T3, T4 would I would just have them based around needs all around labs. So yeah. Um I, I now that would definitely wouldn't be a spot where I'm escalating to some super physiological level of thyroid hormone. No, so it's just uh, keep keeping you within normal limits. Yep. Yeah. So that would pretty much be like if you need it on a consistent basis as a replacement, then leave it there, right? And then if if you don't, you probably don't need it within the confines of that phase.
And uh, I guess, you know, with, within that, and I mean, that would be probably something around the start, but I guess if you're moving from, if you're in an escalation phase, um, how would you set that up? Because you, you brought that up, situation up. Yeah, it's so like the one that's mid push, like you yeah. kind of go into it. Uh, so a lot of times what I'll see is it's off the back of a deload is where it's needed because like fatigue's really high, kind of headed into the deload. That's probably in this situation also being driven from health metrics being out of whack, sensitivity to foods kind of there. We're getting that like sluggish feeling. And so it's kind of like all starting to compound together. And so what I'll do is like deload, rinse the fatigue off, go into the tidy up phase. And basically the main shifts would just be um, maybe a, a shift in how we're administrating growth hormone activity and then just overall caloric in intake. And those would be my three main metrics of like adjustments and then just moving them back in that other direction. This is where I'll often see that shift in adherence where on the way up, they've got that like, I've got to get huge fuck cardio like type of uh, mentality. And then you'll see that switch kind of start where they'll hit their steps every day now instead of hitting it four days a week, right? They'll do their cardiovascular activity full, full out instead of just kind of like 3.0 on a treadmill. And it's like th those kinds of things where you'll see that start to click. It, it's funny when you say it because it's almost like you just make them have a better off season. It's, it's like, exactly what it is. <laughs> it's not even like... <laughs> oh, now we're in a, you like mentally told them they're in a fat loss phase, but now they're just like improved adherence. And now it's just a better off season. Right? <laughs> it's like, oh, now you're just doing what you're supposed to be doing. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You said it. I was thinking it. Yeah. I say it. Uh, oh, I guess man. as far as like any food adjustments all along the way, um, you know, I, I would typically always just, primarily just pull from carbohydrate because that's primarily yeah. what i'm driving up throughout all of off season F fats are usually rel relatively fairly stable and i usually run for more enhanced guys a little bit lower fat approach um, same on protein it's already moved up to a point because when i'll start from from a post-show period protein's already set at a, a 1.2 1.3 grams per pound of body weight and then as i'm adding in carbohydrate you're adding in more trace protein from those sources so proteins already escalated up pretty high so you don't need to add in more protein because you're moving to a, a deficit so it's uh ma mainly just carbohydrate pulled down um, yep. and agree. usually that's focused around depending on how that someone's set up because i have guys that some guys are like 800 grams of carbs. So that might be a total, like just pull from every meal just to make the whole diet more manageable. Yeah. Um, if not, then it might be more so around non-training meals. Right. Agreed. 100%. Um, and usually like, I'm never letting this carb amount getting below like a gram per pound of body weight. Uh, some females don't have a lot of food to work with, but that's again, like we talked about, you have other tools to, to help out there, or I might start, yeah, pulling back on, on fats just a little bit too. Yeah. So I can uphold that carbohydrate amount. But again, um, stop points would be like, for me, yeah. Training performance taking, taking a hit. Yeah. Training performance, taking a hit. Um, and then, uh, a lot of times what I'll see too, and this is kind of maybe where the client needs to change like the schedule management side is like if activity has to get so high that it's starting to become a problem, like from a step count perspective, like if you, cause in my thought process, I would rather drive step counts during a tidy up phase than a cardiovascular activity, just from an impact on training. And all that may be is like shifting into more cardiovascular activity to start. Um, and then kind of tapering it off once you've hit that point. Yeah, I, I would agree there because it's the, the same thought process. It's, it has to be your output needs to be progressive in intensity. Yeah. So if you're a 250 pound guy, like, oh yeah, jump on the, on the Stairmaster for a, a level eight. It's like, dude, this is going to be extremely taxing right away. <laughs> uh, progress yeah. that person up and pull out 
the most from the least, just like anything that we do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just probably driving up step count, but if they haven't had that cardio in place for some guys, I try to make, I, I try to get more adamant about progressing. So I might start someone on some type of direct cardio, whether yeah. it be on maybe a treadmill for that, for that guy incline, trying to escalate heart rate up to, for the health aspect, but also we get in turn the energy output side of it. Um, so then from that, that point, if we're going to move to a prep, we already have a lot of that stuff in place. Well, I think that hits most of the things around these mini cut diet phases we would. Yeah. Do. I mean, I think just the only other aspect is like the, the, the lifestyle, um, aspect, which it's, you know, it, it is a phase that you have to be a lot more adherent in. And yeah. also a phase that's going to drive a little bit more stress too. So to be considerate, to do this when it is a manageable point. So if you have a lot of life stress occurring, uh, maybe you don't do work, it working, you know, multiple hours or your routines erratic, that still might be a time where you're better to like maintain and push off pulling body fat off, um, depending on where you're at, because it, it is a phase where if you have a lot of tools to pull from, you could do it. Like if you've been very, you know, unadherent to your diet and uh, having lots of cheat meals it's like well you could probably pull some body fat off really really easy um and and it won't impact a lot of these other other things going on in your life or vice versa so uh, but it's just, just consideration um to not try to do a fat loss phase in, in a suboptimal time of life yep yeah i think that's kind of a good overview for people just to kind of have a framework to operate off of especially for i, I think you should bring up luke because um we talked about the time durations for a lot of people. It, it really takes maybe six to eight weeks to get them back to a, to a reasonable spot. So it's just a fat loss phase. If you want to call that a mini cut, it is a mini cut and, and, you know, being relevant uh, to prep. Yeah. Relative to contest. Prep. Um, now there's like aggressive mini cuts and you, yeah. you, you did this with Cuba. Yes, we did. And with so maybe, I don't know if you want to touch on that at all. Um, yeah, so this was a little bit multifactorial. Um, I think Coop has already publicly spoken about this. So um, what we thought we had in play wasn't exactly what it was actually in play from a compound perspective. Um, and so what had been supposed to be like eight weeks at baseline, eight weeks escalating up at super physiological um, looked more like we had spent 15 to 16 weeks, almost near baseline uh, because of this. So what we had started to see was like, you know, progression started to slow. The body composition started to shift negatively really fast, um, which didn't overly make sense with where the variables were for the point of the off season. Um, and so we just kind of did an assessment of like, okay, we know this is a problem. We can actually implement actual compounds now and make sure that we are escalated in the super physiological. And there were so many cards on the table because food was high, activity was really low, no compounds were pretty much in play because of like the issues that had occurred. And what ended up happening is, is we took a little bit more of an aggressive deployment than we would on a normal escalation. And it pulled off body fat within that because we wanted to get it done as fast as possible with the timeline we're working with. Yeah. With our target show, honestly, we didn't have eight weeks to spend dieting. Plus we had all of these variables here. And so we just basically progressed every variable. So it was uh, a nutrient drop, a cardiovascular activity bump, um, a compound deployment, a lipolytic deployment. So we had clenbuterol in there. Um, and then a small dose of trend, um, and then a slight escalation as thyroid, uh, that he typically takes. Um, and then we just peeled it off in about four weeks. Um, so it's still, it's still, it was really short and fast, but it was almost a product of where we had accidentally gotten to. Yeah. What was that body weight drop? It was like almost 20, like 20 pounds. Is that right? Or no? Like 25 pounds. 25 yeah. pounds. We so went from four weeks. So. Yeah. That would be considered your like aggressive mini cut. I think that's what a lot of people envision. 
um, envision. Yeah, right. Like we're in four weeks, I'm going to have this like complete transformation. I think that's more of the rarity. And yeah. uh, this is basically a situation where you're the almost start like, of the line. It's yeah. like, right. Yeah, you, you just uh, have so much you can play and you put that in place and, and that could happen. But for the vast majority of people, that's not the, the typical yeah. of what's occurring. I, I do think it, it does give some idea, though, that you can be more aggressive off the, the front end of these phases than what you might think you were, especially if you're coming from this, this push-up phase. Food's high and you've been adapting to that high food intake as well it is person dependent. Like, so like for, for, for Luke, like if I drop 500 calories, like he might not even lose weight. (laughs) So for him, I might need to pull a thousand calories off while someone else, I pull 500 off and they might drop five pounds in a week. It's like, geez. So it's like, it's very person dependent, but I eat regardless. You definitely have the, the ability to drop a lot of body fat and still retain tissue. So you could be more aggressive and you don't think I only need to, I can only lose a pound a week. It's like, no, you can really pull a, a lot more off. Like that first week, d- depending on what your body weight starting is like three to five pounds. Um, yeah. Well, that's going to be f- like food volume drop, water drops as well. And then from there out, you could still keep a relatively higher, higher rate to get to your, your point and then reverse out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's kind of important is like, for for most people it's like those first three weeks and it are probably what set the stage for how long that duration of that diet phase is yeah no i think that wraps it up yeah that was great um yeah that's it <laughs> that's it <laughs> well guys if you have any uh questions or comments or you're watching this on youtube you can leave them below you can answer those for you if you're on a audio medium spotify iTunes, whatever you can't comment but we appreciate you listening (laughs) and we will talk to you next time